Aimless is not nothing. Aimless is bad. Nietzsche said if you had a, a why, you could bear any how. Most people find the meaning in their life through responsibility. I believe the, the fundamental religious truth of the idea that life is suffering. It's suffering because we're mortal and fragile and because we're also subject to malevolence at our own hands and to the, at, at the hands of others. It's a, it's a constant existential problem. And that can make you bitter and can make you hopeless and nihilistic and depressed and anxious and, pro, and likely to abuse uh, substances of various sorts as, as a medication or an escape. It, it can augur you in, in, in a very large number of ways. And I'm suggesting to people that there is a way out of that and the way out is to confront that forthrightly and to adopt responsibility in your own life and to try to make the world a better place and that it's necessary to do that. And that if you don't do that, that things go badly. I think the deck is stacked against everyone to some degree because life is very difficult and we all die. So, but people, some people do have it harder than others. And, and all of us have it very hard at some times in our lives. It's like, well, what's the... What's the alternative? You take responsibility for that and try to struggle uphill because the alternative makes everything worse. Find something in your life that's so worthwhile doing that the fact that you're going to suffer is justifiable. Yeah, life's rough, no doubt about it. And if good luck comes your way, then you should be grateful for it. And if happiness manages to manifest itself, you should be grateful for that too. So then you might ask yourself, well, what's the best antidote to the discomfort of life and you might say well it's comfort and I suppose that's what you act out when you swaddle a baby but a better antidote is something like to suffering than the mere absence of suffering so not than the mere absence of suffering so not to say that the mere absence of suffering that's not nothing I've been a psychotherapist for 20 years I've seen things you can't imagine horror shows that you can't fathom and people who have been hurt in so many ways so many dimensions it's like should they be bitter should they be resentful should they become violent these things don't help they have to struggle uphill despite their excess burden and it's, it's responsibility not guilt it's the female crucifixion that's so and, and that's exemplified best in well the best portrayal of that i've seen is michelangelo's pieta you know, it's, it's a statue of Mary, uh, and she has Christ's body on her, as an adult, on her lap, and yep. he's broken and destroyed, and, you know, she's displaying that. And that's, that's the bravery of a mother to allow that to happen, but not only that, to, to facilitate it. Facilitate it. Where you the, go, kid? Where you go? Where you go? Well, why? It's dangerous out there. It's like, yeah, no kidding. It's more dangerous here if you stay with me. By a lot. So you might lose your body out there in the world, but if you stay here, you lose your soul. You know, I mean, it's a pretty competitive world. There's lots of competition for young men in particular. There's competition for status and limited resources and for the attention of women. And just because you're nice doesn't necessarily mean that you come out particularly well in those competitions. I would like to say that you should all be smarter, but I don't know how you could be smarter. We don't know anything about how to improve intelligence, and I suppose we don't really know anything about how to improve industriousness either, but I can tell you that people who are industrious come up with a strategy for solving the problem that's ahead of them, and then they do whatever they can to stick to the strategy. And so, for example, if you sat down today or tomorrow for a couple of hours, three hours, and you filled in a Google Calendar, whatever you happen to use with a, a strategy for studying, and a list of when all your assignments are due and all of that and when you're going to sit down and study then you won't be in a position where you have to cram for 10 hours a day hopelessly right before you know an important exam it's beautifully put that uh love is the, the highest ideal to reach for and truth is it's handmade i try i thought about that for a long time right this hierarchy of ideal and the thing about truth, that bitter truth, let's say, that cynical truth, is it can break the shackles of naivety. And actually, a burnt cynicism is a moral improvement over a blind naivety. Even though one is in some ways positive, but only because it's protected, and the other is bitter.
dark, but still better. But you're not done at that point, you're just barely started. I think optimally we exist to have something like a playful adventure, right? We're built for an optimal challenge. It's partly why we like to play, because in play you find an optimal challenge. It's almost like the definition of play. And so if you can organize yourself and the world optimally, then you have adventure and maybe you have the adventure of your life. And if you can do that, brilliantly, then you can do it in a spirit of play. That's what you need and want. I saw an endless repetition in my clinical practice and in my own private life, when my eyes were open, the consequences of not saying what was true. It's like whatever hell you might fall into by opening your mouth when you have something to say that isn't popular, it's nothing like the hell that you're going to envelop yourself in if you lose control of your own tongue and mind. And I, like I said, in my clinical practice, I never saw anyone get away with anything even once. And so all you have in a situation like that is what is the truth. Now, you know, of course, you only have your approximations to the truth, but that's better than nothing. And so you need to be afraid of the right thing. And you should be afraid of contaminating your soul with deceit. That's what you should be afraid of. What happens is, you know, garbage in, garbage out, the old programmer saying goes, and so you'll fill your head with nonsense and no one will come. you wanted except you but you can still that voice if you try hard enough you just wait until you get in real trouble you know one day there'll come a point where you have to make a decision and the decision is the difference between life and death or worse between someone else's life and death or worse between health and the suffering that's worse than death and because you've compromised yourself to such a degree you will not be able to rely on your judgment and you will make the mistake you shouldn't make and then you're done. And that will absolutely happen. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you set what's great against what's tragic. Yeah. I mean, but, what else could you possibly do? And so then you say, well, how do you find what's great in your own life? And part of that is you watch. It's like, when is it that I'm doing something that alleviates my suffering, mm. right? It's real, you have to ask that question to yourself honestly. One of the things you have them do is say, well, why don't you just watch for a week, like watch yourself like you don't know who you are, and just see when you're not quite as miserable. Yeah. And then let's see if we can figure out what it is about what you're doing in that situation that's lifting the gloom. It's like, okay, okay, there's something in that that's curative, right? And mm -hmm. that's something in that that's curative is related to, well, you might say your purpose. It's like maybe part of the reason you're depressed is because you're too isolated. And now we can work on that. So let's see if we can increase the amount of time you're spending with your friends by like 20%. Or maybe you need a couple of new friends. Or maybe you need to work on your comic material, you know, because you can set that against the tragedy of life.